Hi, my name is Adrienne Grace Bumpus, and I'm a former BWMT. I was class of 2015 alongside a pretty cool guy I know named Kyle Jean-Baptiste. I just got off a little ditty with um, direction of Victoria Bussard and choreography by the Gregory Daniels um, with the Idaho Shakespeare Festival. And so now I'm back in the city hitting the pavement, back to that hustle, back to that grind, working 18 jobs and auditioning. And I would love nothing more. I started doing this <clears throat> when I was about eight years old was my first professional gig. Um, it was The Sound of Music and I actually had a pretty cool um, transition through life, um, you know, step by step because I have an older sister named Jillian and she paved the way through it all. She showed me which turns to take, which turns not to take, and sometimes I took the wrong turns anyways. But people always say, <clears throat> you followed her footsteps. You know, you're following your big sister's footsteps. And I'm literally following like every tiptoe, every tendu. I'm following all the footsteps. And there's no one better than her to follow. What I enjoy most, well, what I enjoy most outside of this career is, hold on, let me get him. Come here. This little guy right here. <laughs> this is my pup, Rumble. Thank you. Do my lips smell good? This is my pride and joy, my little child. Say hi. Why are you being camera shy? He just wants to play. <gasps> oh, you're cute. Anyways, this is what I enjoy most. <laughs> but in my career, what I enjoy most, I really enjoy having to do the extra work, you know, to achieve my goals and achieve my dreams. And there's no stopping. <laughs> if you stop, then you stop. And it's okay to stop for a while, but you, I feel like you have to have that drive and that tenacity to go and get what you want. Um, so that's what I enjoy most. I enjoy the constant hustle. I do love a good constant nap too. But in my career, I love the constant hustle. Some of my personal goals, um, I always feel so cliche or something when someone back home, you know, asks, you know, what the end game is or what, you know, what I'm, and I always say I am, str I'm hungry to be on Broadway. And I've actually been realizing a little more and more recently you know, getting older and wiser, that it's also about the process for me. I want to be in really cool works and works that I get to develop something and be my own character, be my own, bring my own self to that character. Um, so I'm really excited to see what's in store. My key to success right now, which I, um, discovered recently, or at least it's hit home recently, and I'm still working on, um, you have to make sure that you make yourself happy first. I'm always a person that is trying to please everyone, even if I don't know them, if they're on the street, I'm always looking to please, and I always, I get it from my father, I always want to take care of others before I take care of myself, and I think that's the most important thing to take care of yourself, and Rumble, what you doing? Sorry, he's Go on ham back there, some toys. Rumble. Anyways, key to success, I think, really is making sure you take care of yourself first and make sure that you're happy and you're happy with what you're doing and take that time, you know, to be yourself and do what you love to do. If that's, you know, walk around the park or if that's to sit and watch a full season of Orange is the New Black all in a day which I've never done before. Or take a bubble bath. I take bubble baths at least like eight times a day. But whatever you have to do to make sure that your happiness is first, I think is my key to success. I think who inspires me are the people that are told they can't and they do. I know so many people, you know, that people had doubts in and it's really cool to watch them prove them wrong because I don't think anyone 
can be the judge to tell you what your dream is or you know what you're meant to do if you love what you do wholeheartedly then you are meant to do this three things that i look forward to in my professional career i call them my three c's the first is connection i love to meet people and i love to make people laugh and i love breaking that bar barrier and becoming a friend instead of just a peer um, so I'm really excited for that because I think there are so many beautiful people in the arts and they have this like extra cool spark that really draws so many people towards them. People, you know, people that are in the arts, people that support the arts, there are just so many great people involved with what I do. Um, the second one is collaboration. I really strive and I get so attached when I'm in a collaboration, even if it's in my friend's living room. And I think collaborating with friends is so important, especially when you're in New York, because sometimes you're not always in a show and you have to keep doing what you love and what makes you happy. Um, I have two friends in particular who really push me always, and there's just no words for the two of them. They know who they are, but they always, <laughs> they always tell me, you know, what I need to hear, that I'm getting in my head and you know, I can do this. I think that's the biggest thing with collaboration and collaborating with friends is collaborating to the point where you trust yourself that you know that you can do this. And those are the collaborations that are extra special. Um, and then my third C is, what's my third C? I have communication, collaboration, commitment, commitment. I think this is one of my most important C's for me at least. Um, I've been told a couple times, or not told, but asked if I really wanna do this. And it almost hurts when someone asks me that because yes, I want to do this and I am doing this, you know, and I wouldn't be paying this rent if I didn't wanna do this. Um, so I think commitment because no matter what life throws your way or who says what to you or who brings you down or what like you didn't get on you know Facebook or whatever I think that the commitment to being true to who you are and true to what you love will get you to where you want to be so don't stop because you can do this <laughs> my education in the arts um, has a lot of education because I was so fortunate to have parents who were beyond supportive and let me be whoever I wanted to be. And they bought every dance shoe and you know paid for every class and lesson that I needed or just wanted. And I think that is just such a blessing to have parents that are that supportive. Um, so I started um, at Lyric Academy and that's where I really learned everything, especially from the Harrods. They taught me work ethic and how to be a performer and how to be a professional performer. Um, so I give a lot of credit to them for who I am today. Um, and my expectations you know, for professionalism really came from them. And then I went to middle school and high school at class in SAS, go Comets. Um, I was an acting major there for eight years, seven, eight, middle school through high school. Um, and I learned so much from Mr. Payne and Mr. Harrington, Mr. Veal. I just had so much knowledge coming into college, which not a lot of people get, but that was because of them. Um, you know, they taught me how to do a light board and how to, you know, design a set and do costume designs and this and that. And it's impressive, the books that I have for Mr. Payne's class and all the work we had to do. And it's amazing how much I learned at such a young age. And so I think that really helped me coming into school, um, coming into college. And I went to Baldwin Wallace Conservatory. And for me, there was no better place. Um, there are no better people. <laughs> There's a lot, a lot of good gems there. Um, and I think for me, it was really about what I needed. I needed more of a music background. I had always been in theater. I was an acting major. And so then I really wanted, you know, that musical background. And that is exactly what I got because there is no better place. 
I think the biggest setback um, in my career was probably transitioning into you know the different steps I think in middle school and high school there are a lot of big fishes which is great because it's an educational you know program and it's good to be a big fish but it's also really good to be a little fish and then it's even better to be the teeniest fish when you move into this huge city for the first time um, especially being from Oklahoma you know I'm used to just jumping in my car and driving up to 15 minutes to get to wherever I need to be um, so yes I think that's I think it's hard to move to the city but once you master it you master it and I don't know if we ever actually master it but I think we get pretty good and I think I'm pretty good at it I'm getting there getting better <laughs> One of my proudest moments um, in the city thus far, or you know, my greatest accomplishments, would probably have to be I did a production of a chorus line a couple months after I moved to the city. Um, and I just met the most amazing people, and we went through a lot as you know, the story of a chorus line. You know, these actors and dancers go through a lot to be able to do what they love. We went through a lot and we overcame every bump, every obstacle that came our way. And we had a pretty awesome, awesome show. Um, I was actually nominated for, I think it was Best Supporting Actress, for a part that I didn't expect to get. And it's one of those parts where you're like, oh, I always forget about her. And so I took that as, you know, <laughs> I don't give her enough credit. But I really gave it my all, and I was really proud to have been recognized my first run in New York. I don't know if I won. I think I would have heard by now, but that's okay. I was nominated. <laughs> that's awesome. And the last, how did the arts make a difference in my life? And this really hits home for me because without the arts, I wouldn't have a home um, outside of my home. The arts gave me a home when I was struggling. The arts gave me a home when, you know, things weren't too great. The arts gave me a home when things were great. And the arts gave me a home when I felt too weird to hang out with the cool kids. Um, and so for that, I'm very thankful for the arts always being there and being my constant.